In this lecture, we are going to discuss coccidioidomycosis. It is actually a fungal infection that is actually caused by the two most important fungi. First one is the coccidioides imitis and the second one is the coccidioides fossa deci. In this lecture, we will cover the different aspects of the coccidioidomycosis. So, let's start. First of all, as we have discussed, two most important fungi that is the coccidioides imitis and the coccidioides fossa deci. So, these fungi are actually dimorphic. It means that these fungi exist in two forms. First form is the mold form and second is the spherule form. So, mold form exists basically in the soil. In the soil, you will see the mold form. Okay. And in the body, you will see the spherule form. So, that is the two most important forms of the uh, coccidioides. Okay. So, in the mold form, you will see the hyphae. So, here is the hyphae. Okay of the fungi you can say the mold or you can say the hyphae and in the hyphae you will see the presence of the arthrospores here is the arthrospore or you can say arthroconedia alternatively you will see the arthrospore ampity cell arthrospore ampity cell so here is the hyphae form of the a fungi or you can say mold form and in this spherule you will see the thick wall okay here is the thick wall of the spherule and inside the spherule you will see the endospores so here are basically the lot of endospores present in the spherules okay here are basically the two forms mold and the spherule next if you look at the epidemiology so, most important coccidioidomycosis happens in the southwestern US states and the Latin America. Okay. If next we will discuss the pathogenesis. So, different arthrospores or you can say arthroconedia enter into a body through the inhalation. Okay. So, if I say here is the hyphae form of the fungi or you can say the mold form okay and you will see the presence of the different arthro spore or you can say the arthro conedia these are based these terms are the same arthro spore or you can say arthro conedia okay when the arthro spore remains in the environment then what will happen from the arthrospore you will see the formations of the hyphae that is the one case but if this arthrospore enter in our body then it will form the spherules okay if i say if this arthrospore enters in the body and goes into the lungs and in the lungs the arthrospore form the spherules. Okay. How is spherules form from the arthrospore? So, here is the spherule. Spherule. And in this spherule, you will see the presence of the different endospores. When the spherule wall rupture, then you will see the release of endospores. Okay. And ultimately, endospore goes to the different cycles and form the another spherule that process happens in our body okay so in some times that infection can disseminate to the other organs as well okay so from the lungs that infections can go to the other sides of the body okay but this will happen only when the patient has low cell mediated immunity cell mediated immunity that will be seen in those patients who have low cell mediated immunity in that case the fungal infection will go to the other uh, organs of our body specifically two most important organs 
first is the bone and second is the brain so in the bone that will cause the osteomyelitis okay osteomyelitis and in the brain that will specifically affect the meninges and cause the meningitis meningitis okay that's the most important thing so up till now we have discussed that the arthrospores or arthroconedia if remains in the environment then it will form the hyphae but if the arthrospore or you can say conedia enter in the body then it will form the spherules in the lungs and from the lung side that can infection can go to the other organs when you will see the low cell mediated immunity specifically you will see the osteomyelitis and the meningitis okay next if we see the clinical findings of the coccidioidomycosis so coccidioidomycosis Another name of the coccidioidomycosis is the valley fever or you can say desert rheumatism. So, why do we call it valley fever on the basis of the San Joaquin, Joaquin Valley of the California, California. We call the valley fever on the uh, on behalf of the San Joaquin Valley of California and why do we call it desert rheumatism on the behalf of the Arizona Arizona okay so these are basically the same theme coccidioidomycosis valley fever or desert rheumatism so what will you see in these clinical findings or you can say in this syndrome so you can see the influenza like illness that is the one case second you can also see the fever in that case and cough okay in 50 percent chances you will see the infiltrate in the lungs adenopathy and the effusion in the lungs so in the if you do the chest x-ray then in the chest x-ray there is a 50 percent chances of the presence of the infiltrate in the lungs adenopathy and the effusion okay and in 10 percent cases you will see the arthralgia joint pains and the erythema nodosum e n so basically erythema nodosum is red tenderness presence on the skin specifically on the extensor sides of the tibia and the ulna you will see the rhythma nodosum that is actually the delay hypersensitivity reaction but keep remember one thing in your mind that the rhythma nodosum can be present in other uh, diseases like tuberculosis leprosy and histoplasmosis so it is actually erythma nodosum is basically non-specific okay so here are basically the different clinical findings that actually exist in the valley fever and the desert rheumatism or coccidioidomycosis okay and this is actually the localized symptom and that if you will see the low cell mediated immunity in the patients then that fungal infection can disseminate to the other organs okay so how will you check that the patient has immunity or not so for the determinations of the immunity you will go towards the skin test okay you will go towards the skin test so if the skin test become positive it means that patient has immunity but if the skin test is negative then it means that patient has no immunity it means that if the patient has no immunity then in that case fungal infection can disseminate to the other organs as well okay so dissemination mostly happens or the chances increase in the filipinos okay and african americans in the third trimester of the pregnancy 
there is a chances of the dissemination of the fungal infections because of the low immunity in that case in immunocompromised patients you can see the in aids patient transplant patients and the chemo cancer chemotherapy patients have more chances of the disseminations of the coccidioidomycosis because of the low cell mediated immunity in these patients okay if we go towards the lab diagnosis so you can go towards the culture culture of the uh, co coccidioides emitis or you can say coccidioides uh, posardicide so that you will see the specific agar for the culture is the seboroid agar and the temperature is the 20 to 25 degree uh, celsius and in that case you will see the this when high fee you will see the high fee in the culture and the stain you will use for the microscopy will be the lactophenol cotton blue stain cotton blue stain will be used for the microscopic of the coccidioides emitis or posardis okay you can also go towards the serology igm and the igg igm will indicate the acute infection and igg will show the late infections okay that is actually the most important thing but if the patient has no immunity then there is no formations of the antibody it means that in that case you will go towards the antigen detection in the serum or in the urine and that is actually done by the elisa so this is all about the coccidioidomycosis if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much